such a great day, week number three of the evidence, and we have uh, just had such a phenomenal past few weeks. We had Dr. Hagen come and speak so eloquently at our eight-year anniversary. Amazing. And then Uncle Tim Ross came and brought the heat for week number one of the evidence. Something that he talked about, and I pray that you go back, if you missed that week, go back to our Hope City YouTube channel and stay up to date on all of our archive messages. Man, Pastor Tim brought it. He spoke out of Ephesians 5, and he talked about how Paul was beginning to talk and said, listen, uh, let, let me try to connect with you in layman's terms here and connect to you where you're at. Don't be drunk with wine. Stay sober-minded because if you get caught up in the world system, it will muddy the waters and bring ultimately things to ruins. But instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he talked about how it'll change the way you walk. Come on, somebody. It'll change the way you talk. It'll change the way you act. How many of y'all have been applying that word? Come on, it was a good word. And then last week, our very own Pastor Brandon Barber brought a word on faithful. Come on, can we make some noise? Such a great, great week two of the evidence. For week number three of the evidence, we're gonna go back to our series foundation verse, Galatians chapter five, verse 22 and 23. It'll be on the screens. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces, I wrote in my notes and wrote in the margin of my Bible, not only does he produce and cultivate, but he activates. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. What's it look like? It looks like love. It looks like joy. Say joy. joy. Peace. It looks like patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So the title for week number three of the evidence, if you're taking down notes, here's the title. Are you full of it? Look at the person next to you and say, are you full of it? Because <laughs> when you walk with the Lord and you're filled up with the presence of God, are you full of love? Come on, somebody. Are you full of joy? Are you full of that peace we're talking about? Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So this week we're talking about are you, are you full of it? Because when you walk with the Lord, there should be some sort of should be some sort of evidence. Yeah. Pastor Tim also talked about the difference between, and it's funny, he talked about it and it was almost like a prophecy. He said, have you ever just like rummaged through what you have left and you go into the gas station and you say, this is all, all I have and you put like four or five bucks in the tank. You have some gas, but do you have a full tank? No, so it'll get you somewhere, but it won't get you to where God is wanting to take you. And so it was like a few days after he was here, I had misplaced my, my wallet, which my wife likes to say is a, is a daily occasion. Actually, last night I called Josh. He's on our team. I said, bro, do you have my wallet? He's like, yeah, I do. You left it in a basket randomly upstairs. So I, I didn't have my wallet, but I needed, I needed gas. And so I dug in the center console. Y'all found three $1 bills, two quarters, and a dime. I was like, this is exactly what Pastor Tim was talking about. And I went in and, and we, I sprinkled it. Like, that's what you do with change. I, I just kind of let it roll off. It was like a magic trick. And so it got me some gas, but I had to go back later to get filled up. So the question today is, are you full of it? Uh, I'm definitely far from perfect, but I did win. I did win a battle this past Tuesday on Valentine's Day. Uh, number one, I had, I made this amazing bouquet. I, I didn't, I had an amazing bouquet. <laughs> made for Jackie for Valentine's Day. Come on, gentlemen, did you take care of your ladies uh, this week? Okay, the silence is overwhelming. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that in the relationship series. We'll do a whole subclass on that. But I had all set up. I, I booked a reservation at our, one of our favorite restaurants. It took like a month to get on the waiting list. I mean, it's a big deal. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go, and, and I, I'm a Jeep guy. How many of y'all uh, are Jeepers? Come on, how many of y'all? Uh, if you have a Jeep, how many of y'all? You know what I'm talking about. So uh, I just re-entered the Jeep family. I've had Jeeps in my life, but I just got a Jeep, and I'm excited. You can clap. It's not <laughs> spiritual, but it sort of feels like it. But have you ever been tested where something hits you out of nowhere like a Toyota Corolla going 40 mile an hour out of a Cane's chicken parking lot? Because I have. On Tuesday when I was going to wash the Jeep to get it all ready to pick up my redhead beauty and take her to Valentine's dinner, I was hit by a Toyota Corolla at 40 mile an hour hustling out of a Cane's chicken parking lot. I was driving along, minding my own business, praying. Yeah, that's what we do. 
Frank. No, I literally didn't see it coming. Somebody had waved this guy on, and he tried to cross four lanes of traffic and T-boned me at 40 mile an hour on the right side of my Jeep that I've had just a few weeks. I know, thank you for your overwhelming sympathy. So if, I, if I'm leaning towards my left today, it's because the whole right side is a little painful. I'll be, I'm just milking this thing now. So, so he hits me really hard and, I mean, trashes his car instantly because Jeeps are all like a tank. And I pull up, true story, none of this is fabricated, none of this is stretched to make it fun and friendly for a sermon. I felt like the Lord checked me and said, compose yourself. And I mean, I'm, I'll be honest, I was dealing with the end of Galatians 5 where it says, and self-control. <laughs> I was dealing with it because I was frustrated. Bro, you just potentially ruined the whole night for sure. My car is barely drive drivable. And I looked in the mirror. This is true. How many of y'all have ever had to do this? And I, I adjusted the rearview mirror and I went. <laughs> I had to put on joy. I was like. <sighs> and I opened the door and I've composed myself. And this gentleman's getting out. His engine is almost falling out of the car. It's a mess. He gets out and the first thing he says is, I'm so sorry. That guy waved me on. I should have looked myself. And this is a true story. The guy directly next to me, he, you may be in the room, had his window down, sitting at the light, goes, are you good, Pastor Daniel? Like, he said, I saw the whole thing happen. I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm good. Thank God I had already put into practice the compose yourself, self Control. No joke. As I walk up to him, I said, man, are you okay? He said, I'm good. Another lady yells out the window. True story. Hey, you may be in the room. Hey, Pastor Dan, are you okay? At least you'll have a story for a sermon. <laughs> this really happened. And I said, yeah, probably this Sunday. <laughs> Afterwards, we get all said and done. Internally, I'm pretty frustrated. Definitely checking my fruit here. Definitely checking the fruit of the spirit in my life. One of the constables comes over, said, you don't know this, but I know who you are. And I said, hey. so I hand him a Hope City card. Like, he said, I just want to commend you on how you've handled this. You could have been really angry. You should have been. He said, man, that's a nice Jeep. I said, the, <laughs> the tears disappearing in the beard. I said, yeah, yeah. And he goes, no, nah, it, really, it was really amazing us watching how you handled it. He goes, you should have been mad at him, but I watched you pray for him. And I went over to the Uber driver who ended up one of the nicest people I've ever met, a 60-year-old gentleman who's an Uber driver. This is his only form of income, and now his car is totaled. I could have had it all focused on me, but I put into practice what I preach, that there you are, not here am I. That's what fruit looks like. So instead of being frustrated in the process, I know I'm gonna have to walk out to get this thing repaired. I said, hey man, I just wanted to tell you, it's okay. I'm not mad at you. I wanna pray for you. And I ended up praying for this gentleman. And he's actually here. He's, he's not here. He's not actually here. I wish he was. I did invite him. He didn't come. Maybe the next service. But I'll be honest, I was tested. And in real time, my joy was tested. How many of y'all have been there before? My joy was tested. My peace was tested. My patience was tested. My self-control was definitely tested. But I had an older gentleman who's a father in the faith to me for years and years. As I was growing up and growing in the things of God, one thing that really stuck, stood out to me was he said, hey, do whatever it takes to guard your joy. Because he said, if it costs you your joy, it's way too expensive. Because happiness, we can form in our own strength, but joy is from the Lord. And he said, I don't care what happened. It's not worth your joy. Look at the person next to you and say, it's not worth my joy. Come on, it's not. If you're taking down notes, you can write this down. Happiness comes from good times, but joy comes from a good God. So I can celebrate and be okay in the midst of whatever's happening around me. I've said this before, a boat doesn't sink because of the water around it. It's allowing the water from the outside to get inside of it. I could have allowed that temporary circumstance to wreck the moment. I could have ruined my walk, my witness. I could have got out and be like, we're gonna fight right now. We're gonna go. But the guy right here who may be in the room is like, hey, Pastor Daniel, are you good? 
and then multiple other. You know, we had somebody email in that said, hey, I saw the whole thing happen. I'll be a witness if you need. Like, people are watching. And when you walk with the Lord, there should be some sort of evidence. When you walk into your job, and everything is heavy, and they're talking about layoffs, and they're talking about redirection, and they're talking about all these things. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm affected, but I'm also redirecting that to the Lord because I walk with him, and I know that he's my provider, he's my protector, he is the way maker, he is the miracle worker, and if I'm gonna walk with him, there should be some sort of evidence. Here's the truth, though. Authentic joy is found in God's presence. The very essence of God's character is, is completely consumed with joy. Watch this in 1 Chronicles 16, 27. I love the Amplified. It's on the screens. Splendor and majesty are found in his presence. Strength and, say it out loud, joy are found in his place or his sanctuary. It really is incredible that we have access to this type of joy because we have access through relationship to the presence of God and the author of real joy directly comes from him. Yet in our humanity, we try to find it in other places. Yeah, but you don't understand, Pastor Daniel, like, he treats me right. That's not where you find your joy. Yeah, but you don't understand, like, she's really kind. That's not where you find your joy. You don't get it, though. That job, that, that car, I've been believing for a boat, all of that's wonderful, but that's not where you find your joy. Because what ends up happening is we try to find joy in so many other areas of life, and then we end up giving God what's left over. But here's the truth. God doesn't do part-time relationships. He's either the Lord of everything or he's not the Lord of anything. And if you want authentic joy, it comes through relationship. David, who we all unanimously agree, had some struggles. David in the Bible. If you're sitting next to a David, be like, he's talking about, he's talking about you. David, through personal relationship, had a testimony of experiencing authentic joy and how it was revealed Throughout time, it, with his relationship with God. Now, he had his struggles. Maybe he thought joy would come from his issues with Bathsheba. Maybe he thought joy would come from the victory in the battlefield. But authentic joy, he found, came through relationship with the Lord. Look at this in Psalms 28, 7. It says, the Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all of my heart. He helps me. And my heart, read this line, is filled with joy. And then he says, I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. My heart is filled with joy. Psalms 34, 8 says, taste and see, David's writings again, that the Lord is good. All the joy of those who take refuge in him. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm going to ask you again, are you full of it? Come on. And this is why we talk about spending time daily with God through relationship, because we can enter into God's joy-filled presence, and then the closer you get to the source, he never leaves you the way he found you. The, the closer you get to the source, the author of these things, the author of the fruit, connected to the vine, what ends up happening is you leave filled to a place of overflow. And as we study the word, we see God's promises unlock real joy, not just happiness. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. When we decide true joy, when we decide to listen to him, it's the tough part in our humanity and follow through through obedience to live our lives in conjunction and connection with biblical principles. Look at this, Psalms 19, verse eight. The commandments of the Lord are right. Read this line, bringing joy to the heart. The commandments of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Pastor Brandon said it last week, the manual for life is the Bible. We hear it. If you're churchy church, you've heard it your whole life. If you're new to the faith, I'm telling you, you're not going to find the insight that you need on Google. Right. You're not going to find the insight that you need on social media. You're not going to find the insight that you need in just a devotional moment. It comes through relationship with God. It comes through a daily relationship with the Lord. That's why we're so intentional. And you're going to hear me say it almost repetitively, consistently, perpetually, it, our daily relationship with the Lord, we do it in the first 20 every day. First five in the word, first five in worship, next five uh, uh, in, in prayer, and then the last five in simply remembering all that he's done. And what it does is it's like an alignment check. It calibrates and realigns you to be in sync with the Lord's heart. You know, sometimes choosing joy during challenging circumstances 
I don't know if, if I'm preaching just out of personal reflection, but the truth is that I, I find that choosing joy during challenging circumstances is never easy because we're tempted to ignore God's wisdom and follow our own, our own ways. Watch this in Psalms 119, verse one through three. Here's the roadmap. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. I wrote in the direction. Joyful are those who obey his laws or his commandments and search for him with all of their hearts. They do not compromise with evil. That's what Pastor Tim was talking about. When you're filled, it changes the way you walk, talk, and act. They do not compromise with evil, and they walk only in his paths. And the more you walk in obedience, and the more you follow the voice of God and pull back from things that are trying to pull you away from God, the Galatians chapter five sort of fruit, this fruit of joy, will begin to fully overflow, and you'll start saying things like, it's crazy. Even though that situation happened, even though that situation seems out of my control, even though somebody hit me with a Toyota Corolla at 40 mile an hour leaving the Cane's Chicken parking lot, <laughs> even though these situations are trying to squeeze me, I, my joy's not shaken. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm gonna stay on mission and keep my eyes on Jesus because I, I can go through all of this and the hell happening around me is real but it's no match for the heaven that's inside of me and the fruit that is inside of me. So I'm gonna keep my joy. Somebody shout out loud, my joy is non-negotiable. I said this back in January that my peace is non-negotiable, but I have fully grabbed a hold of this. My joy is non-negotiable. I remember last year, it was probably week two or three into the year, we had had the massive transition here at Hope City. And uh, it felt like if you're creative, if you're in, production of programming world, you know, like we always joke like the devil lives in technology uh, because things just get glitchy and things get weird. And this one particular Sunday, things just got wonky, like screens and lyrics and our TV feed to the other uh, uh, um, campuses and everything just happened all at once. And it was heavy. Mics were like, Ooh, and like everything was just, so we were like, that was really feedback. And that was just, okay, anyways, so everything was just kind of unraveling. And I remember walking off the stage, Josh said, are you good? And I said, none of that's worth my joy because there's no throwaway services. We get to do this again. Somebody just got touched. Somebody just got healed. If all technology fell apart and all I have is a bullhorn in the presence of God, I'm telling you, it's enough because the spirit of God is enough. And our joy doesn't have to be affected. Say it again, my joy is non-negotiable. Now let me say this, and I, I, wanna, I wanna say this with boldness, but almost a prophetic declaration of somebody. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna apply to everybody's life, but maybe you grew up in a house that just had no joy. Maybe you have followed in some of the footsteps and joy is something you struggle with. Maybe you have to <laughs> put it on. I, I, I wrote this in my notes. You're allowed to be the first person in your family to begin to do things differently. You're allowed to be the first in your family to do things differently. Look at the person next to you and say, it's time. I'm making history. Like, I'm going to get joy back. My house will have joy. My kids will be raised up with joy. I'm not going to, somebody might want to shout. You may want to give up, jump up on your feet and give God praise. I don't know, but I'm not going to be affected by what is written in my lineage. No, no, no. It's okay to be the first one in your family to do things differently. Joy is not happiness. We have the ability in our humanity to create moments of happiness. Time on a beach, vacation. Some of you are like, that's joy. No, that's happiness. That's happiness. <laughs> Disneyland, Disney World, Epcot, somewhere fun. Like, I can't get a clap for the word, but they're like, Disney World, hey, man. <laughs> are you going to Disney World soon? <laughs> no, no, but, but we have these moments of happiness. I, find, I can find happiness in a good cup of coffee. How many of y'all like coffee? I'm telling you, coffee's my favorite color, and when it's right, it's right. <laughs> but no, there's moments that we can create and have moments of happiness. There's this old school song, if you're a churchy church person, you know this, maybe as a kid, I, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. That's, down in my heart, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. All right, we're not gonna keep going. All right, that's it. 
It's for all the people that are like, I've never been to church. These people are wild. No, but watch this. We were literally taught this as a children. We were literally taught this as children that we don't find joy in a new car or a new Jeep by what's in my checking account or a job or a promotion. No, I have joy residing in my heart because through relationship, I have Jesus in my heart. I have joy, joy, joy. Come on, down in my heart. The world's gonna say, where? It's hidden in my heart, which is why the winds and the waves of life don't affect it. And then you'll begin to recognize if joy is really from him, then you'll also recognize that his way is so much better. His way is a game changer. And I know it's difficult to balance this in our humanity, but I've seen over and over and over in my life personally, Jackie and I's marriage as parents, that my deepest joy comes from when I learn to just be still before God and trust that he's navigating everything in my life and working it out for my good. How many of y'all are grateful for a God that knows? You're beginning from the end. The answer begins with and ends with him. Yet in our strength, in our controlling issues, we try to say, hey God, I got this one. He's like, okay. You may want to include me. <laughs> That's what the Bible says in Psalm 1611. David, again, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is, say it out loud, fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. God doesn't promise that joy will always make logical sense, pinpointed to a specific circumstance. He just promises that if we'll trust him, he will provide it. So after the moment got happened and I got T-boned and I'm sitting there frustrated and, and I'm thinking about everything that I've got to walk out all in this moment, it wasn't pinpointed to my circumstance, but I had to trust him in the moment and trust that if I would make room and put on joy, that fruit would come out. Proverbs 16, 20 says, those who listen to the instruction of the Lord will prosper. Those who trust in the Lord will be, say it out loud, joyful. So again, joy doesn't come from things or even someone. It comes from Jesus. But at times we can experience Jesus through things. All creation sings God's praises. When we have the revelation of who he is, it really does unlock joy. When you start to change your thinking, you'll start to encounter Jesus in things that he's created. Strength in the waves, majesty in the mountains, gentleness in the grass, authority in the thunder. And for me as a dad, I find happiness in my kids. But I find real joy from God knowing that they're mine. Happiness from them, but joy from the Lord knowing that God's entrusted Jackie and I to take care of them. All right, looking from a different angle. I shared this before, but I love this acronym of the word joy. The J is, write it down, Jesus. The O is others, and the Y is yourself. You notice that order? Jesus first. I have a there you are, not here am I sort of mindset that I choose others because people matter to God, so they matter to me, and then I choose myself. Joy, Jesus, others, yourself. And since God is the source of joy, one way to unlock joy in our lives is through serving. How many of y'all were at the Dream Team Rally last night? It was amazing. We had hundreds of y'all. We gathered, we worshiped, we had a word, we had a moment, we played, we had good food. Come on, somebody, the food was next level. But the dream team is not just people that show up and turn a gymnasium into a sanctuary. No, they're a family. We're a community. Across all of our locations, we have people that serve. We put Jesus first. And then we make a choice to say, my time, my talent, my treasure, and the purpose that God has in my life, I know that part of my purpose to love God, love people, change the world. Here's, my, here's the deal, though. I want to discover my purpose. Purpose comes alive here at Hope City. And maybe you're sitting on the sidelines wondering, is there room for me? The resounding answer is yes. And statistically, one of the ways to unlock joy, the world will say happiness. They say anxiety drops. They say statistically depression drops. They say when you redirect and take the attention off yourself and put it on others, thoughts that are unhealthy and toxic begin to fade. It was an atheist who did a TED Talk, and he said the thing that we can't understand fully, but psychologically we've seen it, some would even say spiritually, those who are chronically full of anxiety, panic attacks, and depressed, they noticed with no medication, the very thing that seemed to fix and heal them 
is when they went out and they served in their community. When they went to a soup kitchen and decided to help someone that was worse off than them, it changed the dynamic of taking the attention off of themselves and putting them on others. Another way that we can unlock joy is through generosity. That's an open-handed life. We're a very generous church. Thank you for the way you give, not only financially, but of your time, of your talent. Outreach and missions, we're a church from neighborhoods to nations. What we do uh, locally, nationally, and globally is because of the generosity of an incredible church. The reason uh, 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 Pastor Morris is in the room, Pastor Morris, will you stand your feet? Our Tanzania pastor is we're able to support and have a campus in Africa because of the incredible generosity that we do and release open-handedly here. You talk to some of the greatest givers in the world. They say the thing that they have felt, whether they're spiritual or not, Man, it just feels better to give than it does to receive. And that's what Jesus talked about. So when you live open-handed, you become a conduit. They say, God, you place it there, I'll give it away. And God says, well, cool, because of your obedience, I'll keep placing it there so you can keep giving it away and keep giving it away. And I'm telling you, it unlocks joy in you. Y'all, we were able to help over 6,000 families during Hope for Christmas get gifts, the joy that was unlocked in families because of your generosity. So one way to unlock joy is through generosity. Another way to unlock joy from the author of joy, another way to unlock that is through community. Through community. If you're not part of a connect group, I wanna encourage you, there is still time. How many of y'all are in a group right now? Come on. How many of y'all are part of a freedom group? Come on, how many of y'all? Freedom's next level. We have groups literally happening all over the city, and there's still time to join and be a part. But our church is large enough across three campuses in the nation, and, and our, our Tanzania campus, we're large enough to serve and make an impact, but we're small enough through groups to know each other. Sweet lady, a couple weeks ago, talked to Jackie and I in the lobby, and tears coming down her face, and she said, hey, I want to tell you a story. She began to unpack her story. You may be in the room right now. And she said, I, I want to tell you, uh, today's the first time in six months of living in this city that I didn't sit alone because I have community. I joined a group. I've got friends. And she showed me her phone. They were taking selfies. I was like, were you taking that during my message? You know what I mean? Like, pay attention. You know what I mean? But no, community, it unlocked joy. It unlocked freedom. She said, I've got my people now we got to join a community. we got to be a part. The enemy says isolation is the best way. During COVID, we learned that, that everybody was isolated. There's a quote I've quoted many times. I've said it so many times, I'm just going to act like it's mine. Uh, if you want to go somewhere fast, go alone. If you want to go somewhere far, go together. Community matters. You want to unlock joy. Be a part of a community. You will exude and reflect ultimately what you consume. But when you stay connected to John 15, 5, like we talk about, it describes the source of life being connected to the vine and where the branches. The truth is you will become what you consume. If you're constantly only consuming the news, what's happening in the economy, what's happening online, you get your information, all the misinformation from social media. If you're constantly living in that world, that will be what you exude and what consumes you. When you spend time in the presence of God, the Holy Spirit will be what consumes you. And when you're filled, it will change again the way you walk. Come on, somebody, the way you talk and the way you act. And then you'll begin to recognize there's things in my life that I need to disconnect from to receive joy. There's things in my life that have been literally putting a blanket. You can't stop the joy of God in your life, but you sure can block it. And there's things in our lives that we may need to disconnect from to find the kind of God kind of joy that we're unpacking, you have to be willing to lose connection with people, places, and things that create all the noise in your life. Because misery does find company, but it's counterfeit satisfaction. Come on, somebody say it out loud again. My joy is non-negotiable. My joy is non-negotiable. So if there's noise in life, if there's things in life that are trying to muddy the waters and keep you from becoming the joy-filled daughter and son that he's called you to be, you have to learn to disconnect. Let me bring this back. Again, First Chronicles 16, 27 talks about strength and joy found in the presence of God. Joy comes from turning our eyes toward heaven. And when we see God in the small moments, we begin to refocus upwards. We stay vertical and we keep our attention here and knowing this is truly where joy dwells. I'm gonna give you three takeaways. Write these three down. Pretty practical, 
Pastor Tim's was really practical. This is very practical too. We can apply it, but I want, just, I want us to grab this today. Number one, we have joy because of the cross. We have joy because of the cross. We, we didn't just do communion earlier, like I said, just to put it on the calendar. Or it's a traditional, sacred, we do it out of routine or ritual. No, there's a, there's a principle of tradition, but we do it because there's power in that. Joy, we can have it because of the cross. No matter what, y'all, we win. Joy in the life of the believer first starts with the, you can clap, with the understanding of God's sacrifice and his redemption. And also we know that we have a hope for eternity with him. True joy starts with repentance, righteousness, and holiness. There's things in your life that you may need to let go of and repent for and say, I've been holding on to this. And he's like, you realize none of it catches God off guard. I think one of the most amazing moments in Genesis is after Adam and Eve messes up, they go and hide because that's what we do in humanity. We hide, right? We compartmentalize our pain and we hide. And I love the moment where God says, Adam, Eve, where are you? He knew where they were. He's like, I know you're hiding behind the rock over there, Adam, smoking a cigarette. Like, you're upset. I see it. No, he knows. He knows the issues you have, stuff you try to hide. True joy comes when you begin to say, you know what, God? I repent. And when I repent and I lean into righteousness and I lean into holiness, when I repent, the purpose of repentance is to go and sin no more. The, rep the purpose of repentance is to say, I've done this, I've messed up, I own it, and now I'm gonna go this way. And I'm gonna continue to allow you to unlock joy in my life. We have joy because of the price Jesus paid on Calvary. Our sin, our shame, deleted, forgiven, forgotten, and finished. We have joy because of his unfailing mercy. Come on, somebody, and his unfailing grace. Somebody should give God praise. We have joy because of the cross. All right, number two, we can still experience, this is a big one, we can still experience joy in the midst of a fallen world. How many of y'all know things are just bizarre right now? Shooting down balloons over Michigan and all kinds of things happening. It feels like what is going on? The heaviness feels real. Life feels bleak. It feels a tad overwhelming. But for the believer, this quote is amazing. This life is as close to heaven as they'll ever experience. For the unbeliever, this life is as close to heaven as they'll ever experience. But for the believer, this life is as close to hell that we'll ever know. That's why it's so important to know Jesus. I can't imagine my default, my kid's default, our default in life when something happens is not to say, I need to take this to my prayer closet in three hours. It's like, no, I'm gonna pray right now. I'm gonna take this to the Lord right now because of relationship, I have access. This is no longer uh, the presence of God locked up in a box called the Ark of the Covenant. I have access to the presence of God because of the price that Jesus paid for me on the cross. It is no longer I who lives, come on somebody, Galatians 2.20, but Christ who lives and dwells in me. So now I have joy. And as a believer, we know that life is but a vapor. We're here today and possibly gone tomorrow. We know as a believer, when you walk in relationship with him, this earth is not our final home. We have a confidence that we have eter an eternity perspective, knowing there's a mission on this earth, but we have an eternity perspective, knowing that we'll spend time with Jesus beyond this fallen world. Through relationship, we can all experience this life together. I'll give you an opportunity at the end of this sermon. You know, last week when Pastor Brandon preached on faithful and faithfulness, you know we had 98 people commit their lives to Jesus. Come on, from darkness to light, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted, the night and day difference that happens. And when you know relationship, you know salvation, you'll know joy. John 3, 16, I saw it at the All-Star Game. How many of y'all watched the All-Star Game, the dunk contest last night? Anybody at all? A little six-foot white dude named Mac McClung, he won the dunk contest. It's pretty amazing. It gave me hope that I can still jump. <laughs> but there was a, a guy, a, a, he's standing in the back with the sign. We all know, it. we've seen it every football game, we've seen it basketball games, John 3, 16. We can experience the joy of salvation in this fallen world because of this. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave God, his one and only son, that whoever, come on, how many of y'all are whoever's? Come on believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The reason Hope City won't stop, the reason we have sweatshirts that say until all of Houston knows Jesus, I had a lady in the lobby a couple weeks ago, well, what about Sealy? 
I don't have time to print every little community. Until Brooke sure knows Jesus, okay. No, but until all, all of Houston knows Jesus, we won't rest. We can't rest as a church. If heaven and hell are both a real option, then we can't stop. Because we live in a fallen world, but we can introduce people to Jesus and help them with their eternity. We can still have heaven touching earth moments here on this planet and experience joy even in the midst of the chaos because we get to walk with him as sons and daughters of the living God. I think that's good news. Somebody say that's good news. It's good news. All right, number three, joy. This is good. It's activated by the Holy Spirit. It's a little bit of a tag on to what Pastor Tim talked about. When you're filled, there's evidence. It's obvious. It's obvious when you walk into a room, the atmosphere changes because there's evidence. Joy is made possible through the revelation of Jesus that is given to us through scripture and empowered by the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26 talks about how the Holy Spirit is our comforter, our helper, who reminds us of all things. The more you get filled up, the whole change, the way you walk, talk, and act, the more you're filled up with the presence of God, the more he can activate his presence and it's not, you don't put a blank, blanket over it, you're not blocking it. He can say, hey, she's not the right one. Hey, don't get intrigued by him. He's wearing too much Axe deodorant spray anyways. <laughs> Stay away from him. No, no, the closer you get to the presence of God and the Holy Spirit, the more he activates the ability to hear him. That still small voice. I'm grateful. I'm, listen, I'm preaching in the choir here, but I'm grateful after that moment happened this week that I didn't get out and act the way I wanted to act. Come on, somebody. Hey, I'm sanctified, but I'll still call Jackie and have her fight somebody. Amen. I'll do whatever I have to do. But I need you to come over here. This Uber driver is mouthing me. No, no, no. I'm grateful that in that moment that I heard the still, small voice of the Lord. It wasn't an audible voice. It didn't reverberate in the whole Jeep. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Like, I didn't hear that. But I felt a still small voice say, compose yourself. Compose yourself. Put joy on. It doesn't come from you. It comes from me. Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is your, it's your strength. It's God's joy from him to you and through you. And here's the truth. The disciples, through relationship, daily experience this type of joy that we have access to. Watch this. Acts 13.52. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. This is one of those verses that I have for the past 15, 16 years. These are, this is one of those verses that I, I like to make personal. Acts 13, 52, and Daniel is filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Come on, try it yourself. Say your name. And is filled with the joy of the Lord and filled with the Holy Spirit. Would you stand to your feet? We're going to dive back in. I feel like a uh, specific application today uh, we're going to dive back into some praise and worship. So don't disconnect. We're going to get you out of here. You'll still beat the First Baptist Church to Golden Corral. You're okay. Just take it easy. Paul prayed a prayer over the Christians in Rome, in Romans chapter 15. And it was such a powerful blessing. Some Bible theologians believe next to number 6, 24 through 26, the benediction that we speak over you at the end of every service. Some Bible theologians believe this is one of the greatest blessings almost like a benediction that compares to number six. Would you lift your hands open-handed? I want to declare and pray this over your families today, over you as an individual today. Romans chapter 15, verse 13 says, I pray that God, the source of all hope, will fill you completely with joy. Ooh, I'll stop right there for a minute. That he will fill you completely with joy and peace. Why? Because we trust in him. Then you will, it says, overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, right now, as sons and daughters, just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. That he will fill you with joy and peace and confident hope to a place of overflow. Now look at me real quick. Psalms 30, verse 11 and 12. There's been songs written about this. I love this verse. It says, you have turned my morning into dancing. Uh, that, that right there was a great opportunity for you to say, this verse is for me. You've turned my morning into dancing. Watch this. You've taken my clothes of mourning and you've clothed me with joy. Isaiah 61.3 says to take off the heaviness and replace it with a garment of praise. He turns our mourning into dancing. 
He turns our sorrows into joy. He clothes us with joy that I might sing praises to you, this part right here, and not be silent. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm getting my joy back today. Today I'm getting my joy back. And then David said, oh Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna jump back in and we're gonna worship for just a couple moments. Come on, Ronnie, come on, Kim. Lord, you turn morning to dancing. Woo! joy comes from him. Come on, if you need more joy in your life, will you lift your hands towards heaven? God, overshadow us today with joy. Some of y'all are going to laugh again. I said this a moment ago. Some of y'all are going to love better again. You're going to live again. I thank you, God, that you specialize in the again. I pray, God, today that a wave of your spirit would overshadow and overtake every person. Fill us with joy. Joy that becomes our strength. Joy that doesn't make sense. Joy that disrupts the chaos in our lives we receive it today if you receive it can you shout amen come on now look at me real quick i've said it all throughout this sermon joy comes from and is established from the author himself of joy and it's jesus and if you're here today and you would say daniel here's the truth i don't know jesus as my savior but i want to today's the day i want to give my life to jesus for the very first time the reason we do all of this the reason the team shows up and they play instruments and they set up in multiple campuses. The reason why we, st we study the word and, and through relationship out of the overflow, we disciple and direct and speak life into this incredible church called Hope City is because of this moment right here. Romans chapter two, verse four said, it's the goodness and love of God that draws a man's heart to a place of freedom. If there's a stirring in you today, this is, I wanna know Jesus as my Lord and Savior, that's the first invitation. The second one is, Daniel, I've been living pretty reckless. I got caught up in the prodigal life and I wanna rededicate my life today to Jesus. I, I, I wanna have joy unlocked again in my life. I, I wanna see him turn my mourning into dancing, my sorrow into genuine joy. When I count to three, I want you with boldness. If you're watching online, you can say yes to Jesus. Our team will help you right there, H crew. But if you're in the room, one, I want to give my life to Jesus. Two, when I hit three, I want you to boldly say you're talking about me. Three, if that's you, I'm looking all over the room. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. Come on, I see you. Amazing, I see you, my friend, over there. I see you in the back. Let's go. I need that kind of joy. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. I want everybody to close their eyes just for a moment. If you didn't lift your hand, and you are gonna pray this prayer for the first time, it's okay. God sees your heart, you didn't have to see your hand. But we're all gonna pray as a church family today. Say this out loud, Jesus, it's me. 
I've been living for me. And the truth is, it's just not working. From this moment on though, I'm choosing to live for you. I repent of every sin, all my struggles. I surrender all of my shame. And I ask for your forgiveness. From this moment on, I choose you. And I'm grateful for the price you paid on the cross for my life. You are my Father. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City. Let's give God praise.